Hey there, home labbers and engineers. FE Engineer here. Today we're going to be looking at creating a dual boot machine for both Windows and Linux. The specific flavor of Linux we're going to go for is Ubuntu Desktop. It is a really great system all around, and it is, of course, running Linux. So let's take a look at what we need to do. When it comes to running Linux and Ubuntu or other versions of Linux, there are obviously dozens and dozens and dozens of different choices and different versions and things like that. For this video, we are going to use Ubuntu 2204 LTS. LTS means that it receives long-term support, and in general, that is, if people are running Ubuntu, they are probably running this one as there is no newer version that is also receiving long-term support. If you are downloading and running Ubuntu 2204 for say something like Stable Diffusion, there are newer versions of Ubuntu out there. There is like 23.10. It is a mistake. You want Ubuntu 2204. Ubuntu 2204 has the correct version of Python automatically built into it, 23.10 does not have access to the correct version of Python. So in general, if you do not have a very specific reason for choosing a different version of Ubuntu, 22.04 is the one that you want. When it comes to installing a dual boot machine, the very first thing that you need to think about is where in the world am I going to install this exactly? And for that, I'm going to tell you, yes, you can do it on the same hard drive that is running Windows. Yes, you can do it in a lot of different ways and you can partition out space and things like that. I'm going to tell you, skip all of that. Do not do any of that. Instead, buy a dedicated drive that is just going to run Linux for you. And there are several reasons for this. If you ever want to get rid of it, you can simply wipe that entire hard drive and pretty much call it a day. You don't need to worry about partitioning stuff out too much. You can let Linux partition stuff the way that it wants to partition stuff. And because after the pandemic, companies ramped production of NAND flashcards through the roof. And because of that, for the last roughly six months to a year, the prices for hard drives have just been absolutely rock bottom. And you have been able to get amazingly good deals on hard drives. And so depending on your system setup, whether you're going to go with an actual SSD drive or whether you're going to go with an NVMe drive, it, the choice is really yours. Uh, these crucial drives are great. I have a whole bunch of them running in my server. Um, but you can get two terabyte drives for $76. Team group is really good. I have a couple team group drives. I would highly recommend you will need at least one terabyte. And I would recommend just saving yourself the trouble down the line and getting a, at least a two terabyte drive. Um, if you can get a four terabyte drive and you think that you will need it for Linux, that's great. Uh, because of the way that I have hard drives set up and network attached storage, I don't specifically need exactly a ton of room for Linux, but I did end up putting it on a two terabyte NVMe drive and I just don't think about it anymore. I know that people in different places of the world, hard drive prices are somewhat all over the place, but at the moment, all of that NAND flash that these companies effectively overproduced for a very long time, it is now effectively drying up. So you are going to see hard drive prices going up and probably going up quite quickly. So to download, all you have to do is press this button down here, 2204, download. This page will open up and it will say thank you for downloading and your download should start. Uh, it is about five gigabytes in size, so it may take a few minutes. After you are finished downloading Ubuntu or even while you are doing it, you are also going to go and get this Rufus utility if you do not have it. If you have other utilities such as Balana Etcher, 
they will work just fine. But in general, you will, I like using Rufus better. I've had some problems with Balana Etcher where it doesn't always work correctly. After all these things have been downloaded, you can go into your Windows search. And what you will do is just type in Rufus and it should come up with rufus-4.3.exe. Go ahead and hit enter. It will ask if you want to allow it to make changes and it should pull up something looking like this. You will need a USB drive with I believe about five gigabytes of space on it in order to do this. And so Rufus will either auto detect it and if it doesn't, you can use the drop down. And for myself, I already have done this before. And so I have this 256 gigabyte USB drive and that is where Ubuntu is installed to. But you will pick whichever drive is correct. After that, you are going to say that we are going to use a disk or ISO image. Hit the select button. Find your Ubuntu 2204. Double click on it. Don't worry about persistent partition size. If you have a newer computer, especially with Windows 11. For the partition scheme, use GPT. MBR is typically for systems that are quite old and the target system that you want is UEFI. This will make dual booting much easier. After that, you can generally speaking, leave things as their default. And all you will have to do then is press start. When you do this, it will format your USB drive entirely, so everything will be lost. Make sure there's nothing on there that you need to save. And it, generally speaking, takes about one minute or so. It doesn't take very long. And then you will have your ISO set as a, as a bootable USB drive. This part is difficult to record, so I did not have a way to actually record this. Once your USB drive is all set, you effectively put your USB drive into somewhere that your computer can read. You turn your system off, you turn your system back on, you go into the BIOS, and you effectively will change the boot options and tell it either to override and boot specifically from that USB for this one time, or you change the boot order and put your USB drive as the first option and something like Windows Boot Manager and things like that as a secondary option. And from that, it should effectively start booting up, save and exit your BIOS, it'll start trying to boot, it'll find the USB drive, and it will boot off of the USB drive. When Linux comes up, it will ask if you want to install Linux, say yes. There are tons of guides as well as you can go to the ubuntu.com website and it will literally walk you through the entire installation of Ubuntu. The only things I'm going to point out quickly here are the things that I effectively chose. When it comes to installation setup, I chose normal installation. It just seems a little bit easier. Install third-party software for graphics, download and install support, sure. The type of installation, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. If you got a disk, whatever type of hard drive you got to use specifically for Ubuntu, you will not choose install Ubuntu alongside Windows Boot Manager. You will instead choose erase disk and install Ubuntu. When erasing the disk and installing Ubuntu, just absolutely take your time when you select drive make sure that you are selecting the correct drive. If you have Windows installed on a different drive, if you choose the wrong one, you could potentially format Windows. So just take your time at this part, make sure you get the right drive. If not, you can always exit out, go back into Windows, look at your drives to make sure that you have a, a good idea of which drive is the correct drive. Once you have the correct drive and you are sure that it is correct, just hit the Install Now button. It will effectively give you a confirmation box saying this is the hard drive I'm going to install on and these are the partitions that I'm going to create. 
that's entirely fine. It'll ask you what location you're in. This is mostly for time zones, for time. It will ask you about the login details, so feel free and put in whatever name and username you want to use, as well as make sure to set your computer name. I would recommend putting uh, having the word Ubuntu inside of your computer name so that from the network, you can always see the Ubuntu machine online. After that, you'll be able to complete your installation. Once the installer is done, it will ask you if you want to update packages because there will be updates. And so go ahead and hit yes. After that, it will tell you that these packages probably require restarting your machine. Let it restart. And congratulations, you now have a dual boot machine with both Windows and Linux on it. Whenever you can boot up your computer, you will see a screen that looks probably exactly like this. The very first option will be Ubuntu, the second option will be Advanced Options, and then Windows Boot Manager. So when you want to boot into Ubuntu, just either do nothing or hit Enter on this Ubuntu. When you want to boot into Windows, you know, hit the down arrow to go to Windows Boot Manager, and that will boot you into Windows. And those will be your options now. Thank you so much for watching my videos, home labbers and engineers. I create and edit all of these videos on my own, so any likes and subscribes will massively help out the channel and allow me to continue creating content to help people. If you got value out of this, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel to be notified when new content drops. If there's something I've not covered but you would like to see a video on it, please leave a comment down below. And again, a massive thank you to everyone. I hope you have a great day.